How do you encourage and support family and friends who are confused about their gender and sexuality without pushing them farther from their faith or alienating them? Mm. Go ahead, Christina. You're ready. She's locked and loaded. You're ready, Christina. Go. Yeah. I think you just love them. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that's that's the easiest answer. I know that's too that's very simple, but you just you just love them, just like you do anybody who's not confused about their gender and sexuality. Right. Why why should you treat them any different? You just want to show them the love of Christ in everything you say and do. Yeah. And I, I guess en- I'm encourage them. Yeah, I'm trying to read behind this question, like. Uh, the couple of words that are there, like how do you encourage and support them without pushing them further away from their faith? Um, yeah. So there's an issue of belief. So uh, that's what the first thing I'm reading is you're, t- you're looking at a situation where you're trying to encourage someone, but yet you're trying to remain in the truth and, and you see the disconnect there. So um, yeah, in terms of loving is, is obviously right. Uh, condemnation, extending grace that's, that's needed. Um, I, I think in that case, um, family and friends, you know, you should be close enough with someone that, that, um, that they understand your convictions, they understand what you believe without you having to constantly sort of remind them and beat them over the head with it. Like, um, and, and again, don't, don't, feel, don't feel like, um, I mean, Jesus never did this. Jesus never gave the power a way to someone else to determine whether he was, whether he was condoning something. Like he never gave that away. I mean, the, he was accused of being a friend of sinners and Jesus was like, that's exactly right. That's why I'm here. I say, he was like, that's, that's what I'm here for. So he never gave that power away to say, I'm going to, based on what the Pharisees see and what the disciples see and the others see, I have to now make decisions based on how they're going to perceive it. He never did that. He basically said, no, I'm, I'm, that's why I came. That's why I'm engaging. That's why I'm here. I think for, for you, you need to love and support them as you would love and support anyone, uh, regardless of the stuff they're dealing with, primarily because that's what they need out of life right now is your love and support to be an example of what Christ wants to do for them. Um, and, and, and when it comes to your faith, your faith shouldn't be, I mean, you don't have to have a conversation about your belief every single time, you know, in order to, you know, well, I don't want them to think I'm supporting and condoning their behavior. Get, get over that. Does that make sense? Like get over that, that issue with yourself to, to, you know, constantly giving that away to someone else to make that judgment on you. If you're not condoning it, you're not condoning it. It doesn't, shouldn't change your behavior. It shouldn't change the way you, you pursue them and love them and support them. Um, and, and if they mistaken it, then that's their fault. Does that make sense? Like, like it's, you should, you should be clear on your stuff, but you don't have to do it all. Like it's not this constant thing. Well, you know, I disagree with your life completely. I want to love you some more. And that's just not the way you, you, you engage someone, uh, especially in that case. Again, I, you know, um, I wrote about it a couple weeks ago, um, just about how the church has struggled with it and, uh, and, and kind of addressed some of that in there too. Just, it's hard. Well, let's, let's just be honest. It, just, it is hard. you have any thoughts on that? I would just add to just a little bit more perspective on that too. The fact that I'm reading into that question and thinking yeah. we're the ones that get to define whether or not the person is a sinner and right. where they're at in their walk right. with God. And the reality is we all have different sins. As we, if, if we were to like actually follow you around 24-7 and do a meter on what your sin is, God's working on each one of us in this room at a different level right now. And maybe this person, God's just working on their faith to, ex- to believe that he even exists right. and that he loves them. And so we oftentimes want to start with what we think is a greater sin that needs to be addressed. Yeah. And God might just be like, hey, dude, back up the truck. I'm just working on letting them know I love them. Right. And so we, we have to stop playing the, fat, the card that we know where that person's at with God. And we have to trust that our love for them is going to lead them to a greater God who's going to be able to lead them to the truth along his path and his timing. And we're going to be there with them through their journey every step of the way. Yeah. And that's what's going to, I think, is really going to help that conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I think grace is, again, the rule, you know. Mm-hmm. Um.